he jumped first. And this was a 4 0 as well, I think, right? Over.gg. How re reliable does it tend to be for a team to swap Diva? Just tweet an ult like Blizzard. Um, it depends on if it's overtime, for example. If you're defense and you're in the, in the last fight, like uh, let's say point B on Hollywood, and there's like a win condition for the enemies, which is May, well, yeah, then you have to. Um, how do you say? You can go Diva Tweet ult. Uh, let's see, this was a 4 0, yeah. What's up, Oliver? Okay, so we're facing Pharaoh Sombra with uh, Ball Diva. Okay, so this is just a Pharaoh comp. And it's the same thing as if you run Winston Diva. Not nothing different, like uh, pretty much like season one Vera. Instead of a widow, you have a uh, Sombra. Nixel, full dive. That's fine. Sombra, I think, is uh, there because of. Um, now this is this is. Mm -hmm. I think Sombra is there for the ball and also Farah, but now Libro is playing. Um, the, the Sombra, which he never really does. He usually plays um, projectile heroes, and I guess, I guess he's comfortable with the, the uh, Sombra win. What's up, uh, right? As far you just try to just spam um, Winston. You can spam uh, pretty much anything, but uh, main tanks are really easy to spam. You just plan on um, winning long fights. And uh, yeah, burn the Winston. You see, there's heavy focus on the Winston. This is how you always have dealt with the Winston. And uh, as Nixon, you want to farm EMP. You want to survive with the Winston. Of course, you don't want to die. You trade the mech for Mano. Animal dead. Not good. Now, how come... Um, how come... Um, you die in there? Oh, just a direct, okay. And then Waxal kills uh, Anima. I think this is a kinda... <laughs> kinda bad equalisance, but... Uh, I don't know if Jonah could have seen it. Just got off uh, some Minecraft, needed to change it. What my eye sees. So you went, yeah. Went for the... I was gonna say a joke, but I, I kind of dropped the ball. Uh, never mind. Yeah, too much Overwatch. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. All right, so two people dead. Is it fine to use um, the coalescence here? I don't think it is. He probably tunnel visioned. I didn't realize it was low. Because that Coalescence didn't do anything. It wouldn't have done anything even if it was alive. Unless he turns around and goes for the Pharah. And that's a massive uh, EMP there. Justice. Nice, there's the EMP. Now you know why it's against the Pharah. You make the Pharah come down. Pulse Ethan. Make dead. And Primal doesn't get anything. And then Mano hacked. Pretty easy to kill off the hacked. I think I think hunters are just way more comfortable in dive uh, in the dive matchup right now. And also Nixel, they don't really have anything for the Pharah. Pharah is just gonna free spam. And I think instead of running the Moira, I'd run an Anna. Mora doesn't serve any purpose here. And actually, instead of running Diana, why not run your own Pharah? And you can run Pharah with Pharah Mercy with Tracer instead of uh, the Sombra.
But yeah, Nixel, they have been practicing a lot of Sombra uh, up to uh, stage 4. So I don't blame them for running Sombra. It's just within their wheelhouse uh, or like toolkit right now. Yeah, there's Bomba with two free kills. Because it's because I, it's Anna is easy to take out as when you play against uh, Diva. Yeah, I, I understand Anna is easier to take out, but when you're playing the Moira and your Winston leaps away, how are you gonna reach that as Moira? Unless you use your fade. Like you have to all in with um, you have to all in with this comp. Trace is gonna be uh, alone all the time, that's fine. Sombra as well. But it feels like it's this uh, player run coalescence um, for Jonak. Okay, this is a really good fight for Hunters, getting 99% here. Libro gets another EMP. There we go. It's meant to be played all in. Yeah, but what's the what's the win condition here? What what is the win condition? What are you gonna all in on? Unless you hack the the Hammond, because there there's nothing to all in on. Well, there was an Anna, but now Hunters has a Moira as well. Moira can I guess it's to survive. Yeah, I guess I guess I see your point. Yeah. Uh, I see the point in this. Yeah. So Anna would be more stronger, but have a harder time surviving, while Moira is weaker until she has Coalescence, and then survives longer, just in general. Plus you have the orbs, you can damage orb, you can heal orb. Before, before we go to the pointer, I want to point out a small uh, formation. I think this is a setup, a setup formation. Now, if you look at this, Jonak here in the middle, he plays around this pillar in order to deal with the Pharah. And now, if Pharah goes to the right, you go to the left of the pillar, and you just line of sight, or you can go indoors as well. Now, if you do go indoors and you want to heal uh, Sombra, well, you just peek your head out to the left, right if there's Diva, you can fade to point. If you want to go for the Winston, you can also warp to a point. Now, D.Va is on point for um, Hunters, so you gotta be careful with the orbs, otherwise it's gonna get eaten. But I think this is set up so that Jonak has easy access to everyone. Is it just me, or does it feel like it's the same type of strat from Nixel? Protect Jonak. Sort of the same. Like, Jonak is the center, still. That's a nice, uh, nice EMP on Libro there. That's a counter EMP. So the question is, did they scout Libro? Oh, he got detected. Oh, Weixal was just earlier. It was just a, a tiny bit quicker. Justice and that's huge. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, all that EMP time, um, or that time to charge EMP is gone. And now you can just hack the Primal. That's super easy to deal with. Okay, they tried to con recontest. That's not gonna work. And Mekwa has no matrix to block Feralt because he uh, used, to, used it to save the Sombra. That's true. Let's see here. I don't think you do save the Sombra. I think you ignore saving the Sombra here. 
Or maybe not. I don't know, because Jinmu's gonna ult. As soon as he sees the Matrix dropped, he's gonna ult. So, either you go all in with the Matrix. No, actually, you have to keep the Matrix. And Among. Okay, so. Here. Mekko was gonna boost in, but because of Among, pile driving, that cancelled the boosters, and now. Uh, since he doesn't have Matrix and he can't boost in, Jinmu is not going to kill himself and uh, they're just going to get the kills here. So I think you go for the Matrix, but you have to you have to watch out for the pile drive, I guess. That's that's really difficult to, to do. That's great timing. Great timing by uh, Huntress. Didn't Libra have um, Translocator? Why use Matrix? He was uh, EMP'd. Because him and Yxl, they, they uh, detected each other. And they were both EMP'd at the same time. Okay, so Beat comes in. Rest on Aemon. Oh, and C9. Was that a C9? What? Oh, it was. Yeah. Godly timing. Godly timing with the uh, pal driver. It stopped the um, animal from touching again. What is the purpose of Lucian Nixel's comp? Um, I think it's because, uh, well, there's nothing else to go, if you think about it. You can, if you go Mercy, Mercy's gonna die. Like, she's gonna get killed somehow. And instead, you can go for the um, Lucia to get around. Like, Animo is more comfortable with Lucia, I think. And then you have Beat, a defensive ult. And um, you can beat for EP, you can beat for Barrage, you can beat for anything, basically. Um, easy to just skate around, etc. If you went for the Pharah though, I think you switched to Lucio to a Mercy, and you still um, still play the Moira. So basically mirror comp like Huntress. Yeah, I'm just gonna change the title here. How good are Moira and Mercy together? Uh, that depends on what comp you're playing. If you're playing um, Pharah, uh, they are pretty good. Because that means you can play Winston pretty easily, you can play D.Va pretty easily. And now you can you can pocket your main tanks with the Moira. You have enough healing and you can fully focus on the Pharah with your Mercy. And then if a tank jumps up or like Winston or D.Va, then you can toggle, uh, toggle uh, how to say, tether the beam to them. And just... Uh, yeah, keep them up a bit. Nice setup here by Aemon and Jinma. This is what hunters are really good at. They are really good at setting up the, these things here. And yeah, watch this. Third, third person on the camera means they can't scout him. Jinma is getting ready here. And this should be expected he's a bit early though he's a bit early because Eamon he hasn't uh, pushed people in yet so the the like optimal combo would be pushing people in plus slam plus uppercut that would guarantee you kills that's massive damage right there you see animal he would be deleted Mikko would be deleted Libra would be deleted CBO by two And now it doesn't matter if Aemon dies, like it literally doesn't matter. But Jinmu miss, messes up some uh, some combos here. So after this combo, there's a kill on Libro that he could have gone for. Okay, the wall, he has to go out. Here, this is the one. Mm. 
Now you, I think you slam here instead of um, instead of punching in. You can punch in as well, but it's way easier to deal with the punch than it is with the slam because with the slam you can go in much earlier, and you can go in before Libro um, even expects the, the slam. He's gonna ice block. You miss. All right, and then. What do you do as Jinmu? You, well, you have to get out, right? There's nothing else you can do. And now that kill combo is gone. The downside is that if you slam in, you can get walled, you can get frozen, you can get orbed, uh, killed. But the same way he slammed in like here, that's what you wanted to do, I think. And it's super easy to deal with him here, of course, because he's alone on point. But uh, it's, a, it's a really cool uh, setup that uh, Huntress uh, tried, didn't manage to carry out perfectly. But that would have been sick, you know, to see. Same thing coming in. It's such a nice combo. Just such a nice uh, setup item, and like you really noticed uh, the teamwork. All right, so Waxala has EMP, Elsa has bomb, Evoltal has beat. And then Bongo's uh, bomb with uh, Death Blossom. Let's take this. Uh, let's go back a bit. I want to see the setup. Okay, so EMP plus bomb. That's pretty strong. That's a normal combo. At the same time, Sebiobi goes in for his Death Blossom bomb didn't reach far enough. I think they wanted the bomb to uh, go further out. Well, like, that's why they EMP'd outside. Nice kill, Libra. Grand Edge. Such a great streamer. Thank you, Kospik. You're underrated. So are you, uh, Grand Edge. You and everyone else here. You guys are my favorite uh, people on Twitch. You deserve the praise, by the way. <laughs> Chilling here, you know. It, it's it's pretty, pretty dense. Um, how to say um, matches to go through. If we um, like talk about how all these setups and all everything goes, it's uh, definitely very attention. Uh, how to say um, attention um, draining. So good job, good job. Okay, they go in. It looks like they are still out of sync on their combos with Doomfist and uh, Ball. And this could be because it's just su such an early switch towards 2-2-2 um, two two that they aren't, how to say, um, they don't know yet like the distances for each other's heroes. So like Aemon doesn't know when Doomfist can go in or Doomfist doesn't know when Ball can go in. Or maybe comms, whatever is um, still uh, an issue for them. So right now, Nixon did just have to deal with this, this setup. Ball goes out, that's... I know that feeling, Imung. Then you have to reset here. If they just survive that combo, they automatically win. So Nixol, they are back to their defensive style. They're this is what they want. Like this is, this is their how to say uh, normal type of strat where you protect with Jonak, but now you protect the whole team. Mano is still like that that defensive uh, main tank, and it's much easier to deal with than if you attack yourself. All right. So even though Mines comes out, you have um, 
get um, the mailed. Meko cancelling that. Uh, I think he cancelled his boosters. Let's see. Did he? Oh, wait. There we go. Oh, yeah, he cancelled his boosters. He must have. Oh, okay, okay. So he didn't cancel his boosters. He died before he pressed the Q. Just has to be quicker. Otherwise, the bomb uh, doesn't travel extra after you die. And then Jinma at the same time gets um, an ult out here. I think it's out here. Or is it? No, it's in the back, actually. Like the nine percent, that's pretty good. For next fight, Nixel they have uh, Death Blossom, they have Bongos, they can get Coalescence, but Hunters they have um, Bomb, they have EMP, they have Barrage. You have way too many ults. So now you can choose either use only Beat, uh, I mean EMP. You can also use Nano Barrage. You can use EMP Bomb. You can use uh, Bomb plus Barrage. Uh, bomb plus Barrage, it's kind of weak. Because uh, now you have Farah, you have uh, a lot of stuff to deal with the bomb barrage. So we're most likely gonna see a long fight, stall it out, and then use mines to stall out as well. And last but not least, EMP into nano barrage. Yes, barrage, Jinma, looking for it. Oh, not coming, okay. Then Barrage comes out. That could have been pretty bad for them. Because if Nixel caps point... And Hunters die, they will get overtime spawn. No, I, I don't think it matters actually. They wouldn't, they wouldn't cap and they wouldn't die. I just think uh, Hunters are better at... Um, at dive comp than uh, Nixon. Victory. All right, that's first map. Let's go Anubis. Ready for battle. Yeah. Five, four, and this is a normal setup one, with um, Orisa Junkrat. This widow. So, uh, Widow, she's gonna be up here, you take a shot, maybe hit the shot, you scout, uh, all that stuff, pretty normal. Now, then you back down here, you can, or you hook up here, or, yeah, you can hook up, hook up anywhere. But the the thing here is that Yxl, he needs his tire before Genji gets played, and Yxl, no, uh, Jin, I mean, and Yxl needs to use his hook to avoid the dive from Winston. Which means he can't use his hook now. Uh, well, he can use his hook now because Winston used jump. And it's all about just getting those shots in. If you get a headshot or just a body shot plus nade or whatever, uh, people will die here. They have to wait. It takes so much time to just uh, farm that blade. But you need to deny Libro his... Um, angles here and Elsa can't be looking into the wall Elsa has to look up to the windows instead up here this is what Elsa has to care about but instead you have um, your junk red doing it that's fine but there's way better you um, how does it ways you can um, make um, everyone more efficient here now if you push in that's pretty good aiming he has to chill Let's see how Elsa covers this. You get a spy check, that's fine. I 
They don't have a widow either. So since they don't have a widow, Aemon doesn't need to put down a shield like this anymore. Instead, he can put down the shield here for this pillar. And then if you have to, um, how to say, drop down from, from this like plateau, if you have to, because you can use the pillars to break LOS on both sides and then you have the shield. Well, then you drop down to this red side, break the LOS here, go indoors, and you go up here, out this doorway with the supports, and you play far back here, like you play for the stairs. Now, you have to watch out for the Genji as well. But that's, that's just one typical rotation you'll see teams do. And then, yeah, always keep track of the Genji. Always. Party. Elsa is just uh, spy checking all the time, and instead you have Jinmu doing it. Jinmu should be spamming for the tanks and try to farm his um, tire, because if he doesn't, they, uh, they risk lose, um, or how to say, they risk losing pretty uh, easily. Now we also see flower in this um, in this uh, round. So Mano, it got trapped. Got a, I gotta show this. Okay. That trap on Aemon is pretty good. What you can do as well is you chill with the trap and you put down the trap when a jump in, uh, Winston jumps into you. However, Aemon orbed into the trap. And this is another set play they have. What's up, uh, Yorbite? Yeah, you got that uh, Golden Mountain. So that's a nice set play, but that's an old one. That's literally what every team did in season one. And Rui, he was a he was a coach for Shanghai, which also uh, Shanghai they scrimmed fuel pretty often because fuel couldn't find scrims at one point. And we literally ran this strat on every map. We were basically like uh, one trick in this comp. So um, I, I think it's Rui just. Um, Giving the information. You don't believe how this happened? Was this uh, that with Coco and Orisa? It was with Coco and XQC and Orisa. Um, originally, we ran XQC. I wanted to run XQC on on Orisa here because it was um, XQC was the best Orisa in in the whole Overwatch League back then, and it was mainly because of his. Um, Use a fortify shield, shield carrying, and especially his aim on Orisa. There was no other Orisa with a better aim. And because of how quickly you farmed Bongos back then, and how quickly you farmed Valk on Mercy, the like the, the core of the comp was you, you sure you have the instant resses, but you have Widow for headshots all day when you play Taimo. Then you have Seagull for Junkrat. Easy. Like Seagull on Junkrat is so easy to play with. You could have a, a time on Junkrat as well if you wanted Effect on Widow because Effect was sick on Widow. And then um, you you just farm Bongos 24-7. You pop Bongos with Valk and that's now a, a, a team-wide nano boost. And then you use that nano boost to blow up anyone basically. Because back then you didn't have a Break, you didn't have Hammond, you didn't have that much Sombra either. It was the old Sombra, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And um, it was it was much slower than it is now. But now you can't do that anymore. So you have to play for like traps, more set plays and stuff. Okay, so now Libro has his uh, blade, which means Jinmu is going to use uh, his tire. And Yxl, he has to be careful with using hook. He can't use that hook before... Um, someone goes for him. And Nyxal, you have to bait out the hook. You see Mano, he's turning around all the time and that's to avoid headshots. Here's the tire. Yxl, he still has the hook. Avoids. And now you kite, you kite that blade like crazy. See, he's getting nothing with the nano blade. At the same time, trance was used on ground. Oh. 
And this is kind of inefficient because you trans here. Ah. Oh. Hmm. I think that Kyo should have gone up to a widow, but that's because we have the up. Obviously, we can see through the walls, we can see everything. He can't. And it doesn't make sense to go to Aemang because Aemang. Okay, he doesn't have fortify. Hmm. Okay, it makes sense because of the blade. In any case, if you survive that um, blade, you you automatically win. But I think, yeah, I guess I guess because Trans didn't go up there, they couldn't rest. They committed to rest, killed Mercy. That's how they lost everything. Okay. Next up here is um, like Sal on Sombra with Jinmu on Doomfist. There's the ball. There's nothing to stop the ball more than no. Uh, well, orb hack. Flower kills Vyxel. Why do they play Reaper? Uh, it's because with Reaper, you can teleport in now. And during your teleport, you can't be damaged. So um, it's pretty easy to just all in with him and, uh, and um, dive him. Pretty much. Oh, he just tagged him. Wow. What was Vyxal doing there? Oh, he just bought it out. Okay, he tried. He tried to go for the. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I see what they did. He had translocator up as well, I think. Then bomb comes in. That's fine. That's a nice bomb. And Nixel sucks at uh, dealing with these types of attacks. They're a really defensive team. I think Reaper got overbuffed when they were trying to push him into goats uh, into a goats counter. I don't think they tried to push him into a goats counter. I think they tried to make him more viable for two to two. Because if you remember the patch when um, Soldier got buffed, when uh, Junkrat got buffed, you know, less bouncing on his nades and all that stuff, that patch, that was to make other heroes like Soldier and all them more viable in 2 to 2 later. And I think Reaper was just one of those heroes. It's just because right now they are playing with the live server patch on 2 to 2, which makes it a bit weird. And that's why they have uh, like Rissa, Reaper, and all this stuff, and not much Tracer. So Nixo, now how do you deal with this? Well, you have a you have a ball against you, you have a Doomfist, and you're playing a Rissa, really slow comp, walking up to the chokes. It's pretty much impossible to stop the the Doomfist engages. You only have hack and you only have, well, yeah, hack and orb. And if you're flower, sure, sure. If you're flower, you can also translocate a meter away from yourself. But that's, that's, yeah, flower. Uh, not gonna help you at all. How do you deal with this? You have to put full focus into, into the Doomfist. He literally... He went one meter away. So that's a nice kill on the on the Doomfist there. Good kill on uh, Eamon. And now you can engage. This is solid. Solid uh, fight there. Once you set up on point, you're still at a disadvantage versus, versus the Doomfist. Doofus comes in. That's a bit badly timed with the um, power driver. Oh, 
There's not much you can do versus the Doomfist. Um, like, um, killing him, I mean, if it's not for Reaper. And because it's such a slow comp walking up, you just burn time while walking up. This is what hunters want. Like, they go for multiple fights over quality of fights. And that's a solid engage. You knock people up, etc. with a bomb. Why do they play D.Va? Uh, you mean, um, why hunters play D.Va? I, I think it's because of these bomb combos, because they send out a bomb, and then at the same time, they have Jinmu slamming, or aiming pile driving, which makes it, um, say, so that uh, they get stuck in, in line of sight of the bomb. Now, Jinmu just couldn't find anything. And that's why it was a bit messed up. Nyxal, they are playing the D.Va because of, um, I think, Moira, but also Mecho is pretty much a one-trick uh, one uh, D.Va. Would you recommend Nyxal to play Hammond or Winston against Hunters to counter the dive? Uh, counter dive to do it, maybe. Um... I think they need something else. Maybe not a different comp. Hmm. No, they need they need like a hog instead of the diva, I think. It's hard to say. You can hook you can hook the uh, the Doomfist. I'll I'll take it after this fight. It's because I'm I'm thinking about the fight while thinking about the strat as well. A bit too much uh, multitasking for me. Let's see here. Because you have to factor in like what do, does the players play? What are they good at? So now they have point. They're still a leaving point as well, which is fine. Fade used for Libero. He has Death Blossom. And now he's alone, with no fade. I think that's a bigger issue than the comp, because you see everyone split split up here. I think it's mainly I don't think it's the player skill on these heroes. It's more so the the rotations against the um, against the um, the Doomfist. So right now, win condition is okay. Do, uh, Death Blossom, right? Oh, Nixel. Death Blossom, play on point. But since Libro used his fade, or he's gonna use his fade, yeah, he had to use it for. Okay, never mind. It doesn't matter. Uh, Manu and Jonak are dead, actually. So that doesn't. That, yeah, doesn't matter. How does Manu and Jonak die? Let's see. I missed that completely. Should be winning this fight, to be honest. They have a DMEC. Oh! Wait. So the coalescence? But what else? Why do they run away? Okay, so Manu gets coalescenced. He doesn't even look towards there. He doesn't even know there's a wall, I think. And this is a normal wall to stand on, but because of the boop, can't get back to point. And then Jonak dead. Animo split off. No, I mean Mano split off. Could be a, could be a flower not uh, telling about the wall or something. Like that Qualysis is blocked or whatever. Because there's, there's no reason, in my eyes, for Mano to uh, vote it back here. Because you break LOS instead. Let's uh, go back to the situation. Here. 
there's no reason to, to run back here. Because this pillar is what you'll use. Or you go here. And you need to... Uh, hmm. Animo is hacked, yeah, that's true. But he's gonna be fine. Jonak can't duel though. Okay, so before Jonak dies... Oh, he didn't have fade either. I think he, he kind of killed himself because he stayed with the Sombra. So I guess it's I, I guess it's the planning because there, you have um, different ideas of what to do here. Like Flower goes for the wall, that's fine. Libro obviously wants to death blossom but can't because once he does and he doesn't get many kills at once. We supposed to gonna come back in, and yeah, it's all over. You see, like that, just matrixed, and then killed. And Jonak is dueling on his own. Hmm. Yeah. So, would you recommend Nixol to play Hammer and Winston against Hunters? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say Winston or, or um, Hammond. Not to counter that, because if if it's only only Doomfist coming in, then, well, Doomfist and Ball, you can do the same type, you can do a better defensive plays with the Rissa. However, it's uh, the issue is that they're just so slow walking up. Ready for battle. And... Um, they need to use Lucia Speed as a, uh, in a better way. They need to orb in a better way, probably. In uh, they probably can, I mean. So that they orb Doomfist when he's coming in into the air. Elsa has to um, not eat that. And then how do you prevent Elsa from eating that? That's difficult. Um, Five, four, three, two, yeah, no idea. I wouldn't... Uh, yeah, but yeah, I wouldn't say uh, they should uh, play... Uh, play that yeah so now you play dive though because as as hunters i mean because of the sarissa setup that's the standard way to deal with it and the same game plan for um nixel this is this is a strat they are all used to they all know it libero needs his uh, tire flower has to position for uh, yeah, headshots. Now, he knows that he can't really use the hook. If he does use the hook, they're gonna dive on him. This should be pressuring uh, Laura already, in my opinion. But since they're playing ball, it's a bit more difficult, of course. Okay. They have scout set up scout lines as well. Scouting sight lines, I mean. So, if we check this here. Now you have people listening and looking for where um, uh, Flower is on the Hunter side, but also for Nixel side you have people looking for the dive. You have Mana controlling Anna and everyone here. He's throwing up the, the shield just to refresh it, in case you're wondering. And Flower has his hook. He notices Hammond, hooks over. Instant. But at the same time, Mr. Jinmu here, he hasn't used his dash. So now this means Jinmu can go in for, for the Widow as soon as Widow has um, hooked away. And this is how you bait out the hook, like I mentioned before. But because of no blade, you have to yeah, try to get go for like headshot into dash or whatever. They don't get it. Here's a normal trap in order to deal with the Genji or Lucio or yeah, Bob or Diva. And Nixol, they're kind of locking themselves into um, into a corner here. This is really difficult for them. Without getting that sleep on Aemung, that would have been super difficult to, to deal with. Because, um, yeah, you're gonna get booped out. Hey, okay, IQ on the bait hook. All 
Alright, so Libro, big deal here. Libro doesn't have his tire. And Jinmo has a blade with a nano up. Okay, so Warlock is up. Kills YXL, that's fine. And hook off the pile driver. Now, Jinmo just walks into the easiest shot in Flower's life. Flower, you know, he, he can be out of the game for ages. He can be washed up. It can be uh, me on Widow as well, but with the Warlock. And again, you're just jumping out like this. It's so easy to hit the shot. So easy. So now you have to reset as Hunters. And now, Nixo, they can set up more sightlines, they can set up bombs, they can set up everything. And now you have to go around again, you have to set up as Hunters. Ball has to come in. And Tyre has to kill Jinmu right before he comes in. Did uh, Flower have hook there? I think he did, right? Is a hook used? Oh no, okay, here's the issue. He hooked. And now he's dead. He's dead because of that, uh, that hook uh, cooldown. And... Uh, Hmm. Yeah. It's over. Tyre has to kill this. But Libro hasn't even... How to say... Started a Tyre. Like, he's, he's uh, goofing here. Like, literally goofy. Oh, that Nick. This is a sick Nick. Anyways. You think uh, Flow will last long in Excelsior? We'll see. He's obviously been benched, but I think it's more strats um, issues here, not necessarily skill, because that hook shouldn't be uh, be used if you have set up a scouting uh, scout scout lines. And all you need is a couple of deaths. Uh, deaths. Just uh, clean up. Jinmu farming up another blade as well. Man, this guy is nuts. So now he has another blade and usually you switch off the Genji for second point. Because it's really difficult to, difficult to attack with. You can play Genji though. And the reason Flower is on Doomfist here is because it's just easy to uh, easy to get high ground. Easy to get extra damage. Flank. A lot of flanks. There's the MP. Gets mecha only. Blade comes out. Flower dead. Why does Flower die? Uh, I'll take that question soon, uh, Fantastic Toes. I have a really good answer for that. Okay, so Jinmu gets Blade in the fight. Eat to support the Blade, but also for the EP. Really good. Flower. Oh yeah, I was gonna check why he died. Didn't do that. Okay, here's why he dies. He just... <laughs> he goes bot mode. He sees life flash flash for, um, by his eyes. And uh, that's a pretty sick may, uh, may stall there. A lot of uh, time bot. What's up, uh, Fairy Dust? Just a kill on Diva. Mech back, Flower dead. I just think Flower has no idea what to do on Doomfist. Because 
like they don't have a setup for Doomfist. And then there's another blade, and there's the cap. Uh, I I honestly think Nixel didn't really have a plan. Uh, they just didn't have a plan. Now, what do you think about people saying it's hard to prep against uh, prep for hunters because no other team plays like them in scrims? Um, so, let's say let's say um, let's say that you uh, live in LA or or any any how to say warm region on Earth, like any any typical region where it never really rains, and you think like this: okay, I'm gonna go on a nice day tonight. And it's not gonna rain because it usually never rains, right? So I should expect, okay, it's not gonna rain. But then it does rain. And you have no backup plan. You have nothing to do, and and the date is ruined, and you lose basically the equivalent of losing a match, right? So in in well, to tie this together with uh, hunters and prepping, hunters is basically like living in um, I don't know. Like living in Canada or whatever, something like it. Some days it's really warm. Some days it just like snows, like in in the summer for some reason. Other days it's raining. Like you just have random weather's all the time, or or maybe you live like in an area where there's like lots of tornadoes. Um, you just have to prepare for everything they can do, and you have to um, you have to look at. Instead of looking at what their weaknesses are, you look at what what are the the strengths and weaknesses in your team and your compositions. It's kind of obvious that hunters they, they go for their um, how to say um, they go for these combos with Doomfist and Ball because Nixol are a team that plays really really tight together. They are really slow. They are really defensive. But when when hunters play against Titans, for example, the, and Titans are aggressive. They don't have the time to go for these combos. Instead, they play snipers. They try to kite. They they try to use your weaknesses rather than playing to their strengths. Uh, well, they play to their, their strengths, but they also use they also use your weaknesses uh, a lot. And what you have to do then is you have to go. You have to think about all the possible things they can do, and then you have to. Look at your. You have to like uh, look at your own team, and you have to be really honest with yourself. If you're a coach, if you're DP, this is not gonna work well. If you're, if you're too proud as a coach, this is not gonna go well. It's gonna be really difficult. But you have to be really honest with yourself and say, okay, this is what we suck at, and this is something we don't have knowledge of. We don't know how to solve this. I don't know how to solve this, and this is what they are likely to expose. You have to pretend that someone has leaked information, basically. And, uh, yeah. It, it doesn't become difficult then, right? It, it feels like the teams that that struggle pr to prepare versus hunters, it's because they, they overthink about how many possibilities there is that they will play ball, they will play whatever. They don't, they don't connect all these comps, or they don't connect... The, the play switches and all that stuff with what what type of logic do they use against us like there must be some logic because I bet you that Rui is not like rolling dice is there like it's underground betting or something so um, to, to um, shorten down that answer I think it is easy just as easy as preparing against other teams just that you need a different method it's the same type of energy, it's the same type of uh, time investment you have to use, but you sh instead of shifting, uh, instead of like um, only focusing on, I guess, instead of only focusing on what people play in scrims and go only by results, you have to like think outside of the box a bit and be a bit uh, creative. Like that answer? That helps my understanding a lot, yeah. It's also a, a very typical Western thing um, to not do this. It's very typical of Western teams, in Overwatch at least, to put more focus on what the enemies do rather than putting focus on 
both or you know knowing what you're weak at as well and that's uh, just um don't know the be the english word for it but i guess it's risk analysis like you you just try to expose the weaknesses why did dallas lose last two maps against the uh, ellie valiant only saw the first and second map goes a peak um let's see here um I have no idea. Uh, let's see. We can take a look at um, that VOD soon. After this VOD. So they played... Valiant there. Actually, I do know. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, OG had a really rough time on uh, Rissa, and um, OG got pummeled on uh, Hollywood. It was really difficult for Timo to do anything because he didn't get space on Widow. And then he went on Hanzo. I think he was on Hanzo on Hollywood. And it's not a comfort pick for him, I think, because he's more hit scan than projectile, of course, but he can play whatever. Um, some days you pop off, some days you don't. Like Corey. Last Sunday, he popped off. Um, I think that also um, putting Trill in was kind of unexpected for Trill because of... Um, I think he was too cold. And there's... There's not, there's not much more than that, I think, because the one first map, OG looked good, then it came to 2 CP suddenly looks like OG's panicking after 2CP and then um, he goes out for Hollywood uh, he goes out for a root and then yeah Trill comes in cold does a bit better but it's still um, kind of messy I think just uh, just uh, weaker weaker team plans like weaker understanding of what they want to do like probably uh, he probably had left out to dry um, a bit in terms of plans. So here you see Hunter setting up with um, old school, not old school, uh, season one bunker type. Instead of the uh, Hanzo, you would usually have a Junkrat. Hanzo is fine. Hanzo orb there. And the way you beat this is by going to point and then for some reason, you know, you can force the Ursa off high ground. Nixel, they did it by um, walling. And now because they aren't playing snipers themselves, Bacon Jack has a lot of free space here, but he doesn't get kills before Nene Mecho does. So it doesn't matter that he has free space and can go whatever you know wherever he wants. Uh, let's see here. I need to look at this. Oh yeah, Reaper comes in from behind. And usually you don't play Ana here. Because it's it's very easy to just yeah, kill the Ana with uh, either your own snipers or whatever, but I guess Nene Yeah, just succeeded with the flank. Nothing else. You can sleep the Reaper, you can you can not survive if you drop down. You have to you have to kill him or sleep him. And then kill him. Alright. Let's see. Hunters they have to chill with putting down shield. They put down shield a bit too early. Actually is it early? No it's not. It depends because if they put down the shield early, Pixel, because they had their shield down, they are gonna spam down Hunter Shield. Hunter Shield go goes away. Alright, Mano, you just go in. You just go in. Put on a new shield. And then uh, if you're a Jichiran here, there's nothing you can do. Like you can, well, you can fortify, but if you fortify, you have to watch out them for freeze. There's a wall there to um, block off people. Luckily, Leetian got a hook. And uh, I think this this uh, lineup was specifically 
uh, how to say, chosen for King's Row because of the way the play Orisa here was set up. So like a pocket threat sort of. And also since uh, Lee Tiang is really good on um, Zarya, they uh, they wanted to go Zarya at some point. And that was when they um, were playing attack. However, defense right now. Orb to stop the engage, that's fine. And now you have to win the shield war. Mail comes in. What do you do? What well, do you try to back out? Counter mailed in order to deal with um, yeah, getting frozen as me. That's fine. Now, Jonak uses trans here as well after Libro is dead. And beat. That's a lot of commitment. That's so much. So, mu so many ults used. However, a huge death blossom. And if Jichiren doesn't die, that would be amazing for uh, for um, hunters. He kind of pushes in too far here. And then he uh, has to deal with the Eva bomb. I hate to say it, but with better aim, Nana would be dead already. And then the reason he's looking down here is because of shield. He's, uh, he's trying to press shield. He could have killed uh, Jonak here. He could have easily killed Jonak and just go for headshots, but needs better aim. And then, yeah, doesn't think he. This is the wrong. This is the wrong movement in all scenarios because if he's standing here, it's still gonna. It's gonna take a lot of time for um, Jonak and Libro to walk up. If he goes to the side, I, I, I think it's because he's predicting that someone is coming here. He's a, not not the um, Libra, I mean uh, Anima. He's probably expecting someone coming here. But you have Late Young protecting you. So he just bot bots out because he he had that fortify coming up. He had that shield coming up. So this is just yeah, needing more practice on the hero. Do you think these mistakes you point out during Overwatch uh, League of Odd uh, reviews are caused by what? Like this overuse of ultimates, more of a play choking sp uh, thing or strategy? Um, no, no, when I mentioned like a lot of ultimate used, um, I don't say it's more of a mistake. I don't say it's the right thing or a mistake. I just point out it happened. Um, when, when it's a mistake, I usually say it's a mistake or it's not good, etc. I, I just try to like remove, uh, I just try to like extract like whatever happened, you know, with okay, a lot of faults used there. So, it, you know, makes sense uh, to you guys watching. Uh, but Jitchiren there, that was his personal like individual mistakes, and that's because he just hasn't enough experience on the hero. He's not skilled enough. He, you know, it can be anything from he's hungover because he was out partying in Las Vegas and just like two hours before the match flew in and then now he's uh, playing, he hasn't slept in four days or something or it could be that he hasn't played the game enough um, efficiently or just hasn't learned quickly enough that's a nice wall, that wall got put down too early I think what do you think about them running Zen slash Lucio, it seems risky with such a low heal output uh, the Zen is fine because of um, how to say it. Zen is fine because he's gonna play far back. He's always gonna play far back, and Jonik is more comfortable on the Zen rather than Moira. Because if you play the Moira, you have to brawl, and then they have the May, you know, 
you don't want to get uh, walled off here. King's Row is really easy to get walled off on. Okay, so wall comes in. Oh, I think I think he drops the wall because he expect he thought he locked in someone in his team. Otherwise, he should have kept the wall. The wall would have gone down eventually, you know, after half a second something because of the hoggle. Then trans used to go all in, which I think is unnecessary, to be honest. All right. And Nixel getting staggers, that's good. They should be uh, keep uh, pushing cart here. They should keep pushing the cart. Why aren't they? Yeah, why aren't they pushing the cart here? Oh, it's because uh, they want to trap them with Nene and Libro. There's a Sonic up there. Yeah, Huntress didn't know about that uh, TP. I guess they wanted to trap them. And they had to watch out for Jinma Salt. There's a beat there. And then he dies in the back alone. Let's see. <laughs> no. Okay, he has to fade out. Oh no. Yeah, he didn't get the beat either. And then there's a hog who's nanoed in his face. No. That's a that's a misplay on his um, his part. That's just wrong decision making. Well, it depends. It's either it's wrong decision making if you're not supposed to engage. If the plan is to not engage, then it is. If the plan is to engage, but you can't really uh, deal with the nano hog, I guess it's still wrong because then you. Hmm. Can you circumvent the hog? No, you can't circumvent the hog. He's either dead in all cases, because he's too far away from Bap, he's too far away from Hanzo, and he's too close to uh, Rodog, or he doesn't do anything and goes back here and just please like, he's like tickling people from far away. So, then he had, yeah, I think he had to go for the hog there actually. He couldn't do anything else. That's a nice wall. This is when Zen is uh, pretty weak though. Zen is pretty weak because there's a shield in your face and you can't find Discord. And it's gonna take so much time for Nani to farm uh, Death Blossom. Now he has trance. If you can push in with the trance, you can be aggressive with it. Um, which is the same thing as uh, going aggressive with Moira, and that's why Q is on Anada. Okay, Bongo's dead, Nani up here. We got a hook. That's a massive nade on Libra, he's dead. 
and he died with uh, all cooldowns down. Nyx still are way too defensive to be, be uh, able to do anything with the Reaper. That's the thing. And Jonah has to switch now. Because that nade just kills everything. Could Mekko eat that nade even? Okay, he tried to eat for the dragon. Matrix gone. Here comes the orb. And then, okay, he couldn't. He couldn't eat for the orb. Uh, I mean, Nade. I mean. Because Nade, uh, his Q is just gonna wait with the Nade, so Q outplayed that pretty uh, pretty well. Did he actually outplay it though? Let's see. Or did he just bot out? Because if he sees the Matrix, he could have. Or someone can call out Matrix as well, like if Jichiren does it. There's no way he could see Matrix there, is there? Yeah, this is half speed. Yeah, no, you're right. It's it's pretty weird, champ. There's no way he can see the Matrix. I think. Maybe there is, because when they play, they don't have these skins. They have default skins, so it's easier to see. So I think if if they even think about Matrix, he's relying on someone else providing that information. For example, Jin Mo, Jichiren, or Leitian. Okay, Matrix used, or like, it's just a, a play they make with the wall. Like, they try to wall off the... Uh, the diva. That's also possible. If if it's none of those two, then it's most likely luck. Uh, no, no, no. Coincidence. Coincidence. Not luck. We're not gamblers here. Okay, matrix used. Another wall coming in. Oh, no wall. Just normal, um, normal melt. The, these bombs, I hate them as a Risa. They are so tricky. You see, just one pixel above the shield, and Jitra is dead. But they are so, yeah, they are so tricky. That's a good bomb to deal with the deal with the melt. Defensive. Diva bomb into Mayolt, that's basically like the new defensive bomb into Grav. Alright, Jonak flanking. Weird dragon. That's a really weird dragon. What's up, Rebel? I see. Ixel has struggled with uh, getting value out of their uh, Reaper. The Reaper has gotten zero value almost. All their value has been from um, the Diva plus um, Mailt. Book on the Lucio. Oh, should have seen that. I didn't pay attention. Did they stabilize? Yeah, they they used dragon earlier. Nixol pushed, uh, fell back. Okay, so Reaper teleporting in behind. This is why Reaper is played now because you can just TP in like this. They probably know he's here. Anna knows most likely. Yeah, she does. Die, die, die. 
Oh, and then he goes out of um, line of sight for um, mortality field. Yeah. yeah, massive rebuild. Uh, I just feel like Nixel they kind of struggle with. Uh, I already mentioned it, but they struggle with the rebuild because they are so. So, is it inept the word? Let's see, inept. Yeah, inept at attacking. Attackers incoming in 30 seconds. And uh, Hunters, they decide to run Reinhardt here. Yeah, so Rissa, like Reinhardt. <clears throat> That's a nice hook. Three, ready, two, one. Attackers incoming. Defend objective. It's pretty bad to play Rissa like this. It's really bad. And that's because you just run into the Orissa and she's dead. Now Jin may drop down to uh, too much. Way too much. Yeah, he didn't think. Oh, wow. Yeah, he didn't even think. Lee Young uh, used his bubble as well. And then there's a wall. You can, like, sure, me is really annoying versus Reinhardt, of course, but if you're super aggressive with the Pharah or something else around the wall, they're not gonna kill you, Reinhardt. Okay, so Widow versus Widow. Q kills Jonak. Mano kills uh, Jinmu. And they get a rest and Nana is dead. That's pretty poke jump. Nice kill on Mano. There you go. Okay, nice. Okay. Now Jinmu, he's dropping down here to get a kill. He gets the kill. No, he's fine. Okay, he's fine. Uveltal almost, almost messing up and dying because of the wall there. And this is why Pharah is so good on this, uh, this part of the map. You can just hug the walls really far up. You can play above the rooftops. And then you just delete everyone. I, I love this aggression. It's just just so nice to see. Was Nani um, left? Uh, no, he was uh, he was um, forward spawn, and he took a skill a skill matchup versus uh, Jinmu. There's a Nene on Reaper now. Which... Um, yeah, Nene on Reaper is gonna be difficult into the Pharah. You see, they had they had one fight. They, have, they haven't even had one fight. This is the first fight on second point, and they're already capping. Not really a skill matchup. Oh, I mean, it's a skill matchup when... Um, the, the Widow was here, and the Pharah was up in there, so it was like... Uh, shooting versus dodging. So if you dodge the first Widow shot and you get a direct, you're pretty much set. And now you can't deal with the 
Pharah. Like, it's impossible to deal with the Pharah. Watch Jinmo here. Okay, Mayalt. What is Mayalt gonna do? You have Reinhardt and Zarya. Cool, cool. Zarya that gets out and Reinhardt that gets sacrificed. Jichiren, he's always dying anyway, so it doesn't matter. He's like bumper, budget bumper. Now, high energy Zarya. And where's Farah? Well, she's above the Mayalt. Cool. Now, Farah gets Nano. How often does a Farah go melee range like this? How often? This is just Nyxel not really knowing what to do. Getting uh, getting out sniped, staggered, and them cart pushing. Uh, like uh, the the issues that they only had one fight, a really bad fight. I do it all the time, but I'm feeding. Nah, you're not feeding. The only people feeding are uh, Nyxel right now. And then you keep spamming the chokes. You hold the chokes here, Warlock and everything. They're totally fine. You see Mano here? What's he gonna do on Orissa? He's just gonna get headshotted. So instead of playing Orissa here, this is when you go Winston. No joke, you go Winston. You can keep the May, you can keep the Reaper, but you go Winston to deal with the Pharah. Or to deal with the Widow. You're not gonna die to them. You have Anna pocketing you, you can nano. Just nano kill the Mercy, kill the Widow, whatever. Um, you're pretty fine here. The thing is that Hunters, they have, um, they have a grab and they have Shatter, so you're gonna get shattered, you're gonna get grabbed. But if you're waiting with a Risa, you're not taking a fight when the cart is here on this corner, or before it turns this corner, you're gonna lose in one fight. What about going ball? Ball works as well. Uh, ball works too. I think if, if if you go ball or Winston, you're still gonna get grabbed and killed. But you you can contest card. You can make some space right now. They are too focused on the Pharah here. Now rotating slowly. The shield here does nothing. Well, okay, it does some. But how do you break a line of sight now? If you break the shield as hunters, let's say that you're late young, you have 37 energy, you're not high on energy at all. What should we do? Well, I have no idea. Jinma. Oh, I can concussive, I can nade. Uh, no, not nade, I can direct. You'd love this. And this is why Orisa doesn't work versus the fire. Like, you just shoot above the shield. And then you have a Rhino swinging into his face. And you can't blame Mano. You can't blame him for dying here. Every Orisa would have died. Every Orisa. Instead, blame the strats they have because they are probably being told to play Orisa and to play like this. This makes zero sense to sit up there. But, well, it does make some sense. The only reason it makes sense it's because they have to contest cart now and if they don't and they lose this fight hunters they're gonna cap with four five minutes or like four minutes and 40 seconds or whatever and uh, nixel they only have 18 seconds in the time bank which means they don't get an extra minute they only well they do get the, they do get an extra minute right yeah one minute and 18 seconds and um Dying here means you can contest a tiny bit, you're gonna respawn, then you go ball or something. That's the only logic I see. Or you fortify, you let Nani come from behind or whatever. Because you see the grab comes in, people are dead. Libra is chilling here, taking a nap. so easy to deal with. Its 
And it's because Jim is free farming. Bacon Jack is free farming. Like, they, they don't have to do anything. And they send up Nenny to kill him. Nenny can't really kill him. And uh, then your tanks to just run into your Rissa. Please go back to, to sleep, my face. I think Mixel are relying a bit too much on set strats from coaches, maybe. And because of that, if the coaches are slow to learn the meta, not not, not Nixel coaches, but coaches in general that does this type of, um, how to say, um, they have this type of system how you play, you, you execute this plan. If they are slow to the meta, it's just gonna slow down the players. And it makes zero sense that a player should lose like this, because I'm pretty sure... Sorry. Uh, I'm pretty sure like these, these players in Nixel, they have everything necessary to to make good enough decisions. Okay, we, we don't play May Reaper into Feral Widow. Like, that's, that's a no-brainer. Another couple of teams that does this is Paris. It's uh, gladiators. It's it used to be outlaws. Um, Mayhem used to do it. Fuel does it. A lot of teams uh, don't have um, the players. Um, what to say? Empowered enough, I guess. Enabled enough. That's a nice need from. Uh, Don't like there. Was fuel like this back at season one? Um, no, fuel wasn't like this. Uh, fuel was. Let's see. Fuel was relying on. Well, I can't. I can, actually can't uh, describe what uh, was the strat, like exact strats, um, because of yeah, contract and stuff. Um, fuel had other issues. That's. Uh, I think that's uh, safe to say. And in um, stage four, we were pretty uh, good at adapting and all that stuff. Uh, this this season they aren't though. Okay, so Mecco dead, Bacon Jack traded. Wait, that wasn't by uh, Jonak that made. That was by um, Kyo. Wait, do you see nine here? So Mekko dead. Oh no! Oh, they leave point too early. Oh, Anamorph probably expects a touching point here. But he's not. Oh, that's unfortunate. This is unfortunate. Anamorph. Anyone could have uh, stayed one second extra. That's a huge C9. This is probably a player's panicking then. If we go back to what Huntress did. Okay, let's see. You start capping point, sure. Ichiren, he's in the same position like any Orisa would be in. Mekko, he's alone. Okay, to go for flank. And now, the reason you go for the flank is in order to push out the, the Widow. But then you have a set uh, line of sight there with Joanna. That gets slapped. And then just nice timing. Okay, three, two, one, go in. Kill. Uh, Libro could wall this. He could easily wall that. Could he? Yeah, he could easily wall that. Ten seconds remaining. Okay. 
so Mecho dead with 10 seconds left. Probably panic again a bit. Because, yeah, Dragon is behind you. Yeah. It looks so. Did you watch the vid I sent you? I, I saw some of it. I saw some of it. Um, yeah, I saw. Uh, I don't know how to reply to that, to that video. Uh, it was a goat's uh, song for for anyone who um, wonders what what we're talking about. All right, so Hunters, imagine you have 4 minutes, 44 seconds to cap versus Nyxal and win the map, or win the match. Nyxal, they're holding close again. This is basically, like, it basically is, uh, they, they take the goat strat, they remove the, the heroes, like Reinhardt, they, they remove the name of Reinhardt, Zarya, uh, Diva, Brig, all that stuff. And they just put in Orissa, Hog, Widow, May, Bap, and played like this instead. No wonder it's so easy to push in versus them. It's just so easy. I think they're literally taking their goat strat and only using it different heroes and by this point it's 3-0 hunters they win and the fourth map doesn't really matter it has zero value i think we already know hunters won because they are uh, they have better set plays with like the doom fist ball they have uh, Farah, uh, Farah sight lines with uh, the way you push in with uh, Risk and all the stuff. You have good uh, need set up with a kill on on the hog and using diva all the stuff. Uh, Nixel not really knowing how to respond or probably taking too much time to respond, which would be like analyzing on the fly to to for too long. Yeah, I think both titans and hunters lost. For the same reason, strategical issues. Titans and Nixel. And Nixel for way, way more, how to say, uh, not, not the same actually. No, no, it is the same. Uh, Titans, they had solid plans, but it was the wrong plan. Nixel, they straight up didn't have a plan, I think. Uh, they Well, they did have some plan, but it was more like... You put on whatever type of clothes... You just go out into the world and do whatever you can think of, like that type of mindset. You just do something. 